In a previous video, I talked about the determinants of industry profitability and Michael Porter's five forces model. And here I have his five forces model laid out in the typical diagram that you see. Now, what I want to do is go into a little more detail about two of the factors that determine industry profitability, that is bargaining power of suppliers and bargaining power of buyers. Now, the bargaining power of suppliers, what determines that? Well, suppliers are, are powerful if the firms in an industry have few other sources of supply or if suppliers have many other buyers. So, for example, um, if you look at companies making personal computers, what drives the personal computer? It's that CPU chip, that the brains of the computer. And who makes the chips? Intel and AMD. There aren't a lot of other places to go to get a chip. So therefore, suppliers are able to extract a lot of the profitability out of the PC industry. And that's why the PC industry is not a great investment these days. Dell has just gone from being a public company to going private. Most of the PC companies are not doing very well. Um, IBM was in the PC business. They've sold off their PC business to Lenovo, a Chinese company. So it's not a very good business. It's a commodity business. In fact, the only thing that seems to really matter is what chip you have inside. In fact, Intel did a great job of marketing themselves. So you don't think about buying a Dell or an HP computer. You think about buying an Intel computer. And they even have on the computer the little sticker that says Intel inside. So um, they've extracted a lot of the profits of the PC industry. Another factor that determines um, the bargaining power of suppliers is um, the existence of switching costs. If it's difficult to switch to a different type of product, a different type of supplier, then you may not be able to, uh, you know, then suppliers may be able to charge you more. If you've set up a computer system, you know, um, um, a mainframe computer system, well, and you're getting your software from IBM, it's not easy to just switch out of it. I mean, you have the switching costs are enormous. I mean, getting rid of that computer system and then putting in a new computer system. So IBM can extract, again, some of the industry's profits by charging a higher price for, you know, their software or whatever it is they're selling. Um, firms in an industry have power if they have many alternative sources of supply. So if there are a lot of suppliers, so the opposite of the, the first point I made, if there are places where you can get a lot of products, for example, there are lots of companies that make memory chips, okay, not the CPU chips, but the memory chips. So, you know, therefore memory is really a commodity business. Hard drives, there are a number of hard drive manufacturers. So those kinds of uh, suppliers are not extracting as much of the industry profit out of the PC industry. Um, if it turns out that the, the industry has a credible threat of integrating backwards to provide their own sources of supply, again, that makes the industry more profitable. They don't necessarily have to do it, they just have to be able to provide a credible threat that they could if you don't, if you charge them too much, that they will backward integrate and and provide their own supply of what's needed. Um, an industry benefits from having well-known information on supplier prices. Okay, so you know the better they're able to get information, the better off they are. And the industry benefits if suppliers cannot easily segment the market and thus have difficulty using price discrimination. If they can separate the market and charge one group of customers one price and another group of customers another price, then you know they're able to extract some of the industry profits. But sometimes you can't do that, and that's, uh, that's something you look for in terms of determining uh, industry profitability or the effect of bargaining power of suppliers on industry profitability. Let's take a look at the bargaining power of buyers. And again, the number of, of buyers is a big factor. Okay, if firms have only a small number of buyers, we call this an oligopsony, 
Okay, you've heard of oligopoly, a few sellers. Well, oligopsony means a few buyers. Um, the buyers may be able to negotiate a better price. I mean, think about being a defense contractor. Okay, you make uh, you make missiles. Well, it's not as if if you're in the United States, there are laws in terms of who you can sell to. You can't simply start selling your missiles to Iran or North Korea just because they offer you a good price. Okay? The only person you can sell to is the U.S. and therefore that limits um, you know, some of your bargaining power. Airplane manufacturers, not everybody's buying an airplane. Okay? So you have Boeing and you have um, Airbus. There are not a lot of airplane manufacturers and um, <clears throat> You know, who do they sell to? Well, they sell to the major airlines. Um, they sell to, you know, companies probably like FedEx and UPS that use air, airplanes to ship their goods. But they don't sell to, there aren't that many people who buy airplanes. So, again, that sort of limits um, who you can sell to, and it gives the buyers some bargaining power. Um, what we also have to look at is, what are the switching costs? There's that term again. You know, how much, how costly is it to switch from, you know, one product to another? All right. If there are low switching costs that allow buyers to move to another industry's products, um, then, you know, again, the industry is not going to be particularly profitable. And also, if there are information as asymmetries, that is, if the sellers know more about the price and the cost than the buyers do. You have this when you're buying a car. You go into a dealership. You know what is it? What does the car cost them? What's a fair markup? Okay. What incentives does the manufacturer give? Now, the advent of the internet has made this a lot, a lot better. So that when you go into a dealership, you know, uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you went into a, an auto dealership. You had no idea what price you should pay. Now you can go online. There are a lot of sites, uh, you know, cars.com, Edmunds, uh, um, Kelly Blue Book. They all have sites online that tell you what the dealer cost is. They tell you what you, you know, what's a fair price to pay in your area. So the more information the the buyers have, the greater bargaining power they have, and the less information they have the better the profitability in the industry. So, you know, these are two factors that affect industry profitability. Keep in mind, again, that the Michael Porter Five Forces model is an industry analysis, and it gives us an idea of how profitable the industry will be. And, and part of that is determined by the bargaining power that buyers have, as well as the bargaining power that suppliers have.